Hi, in this video, we're going to look into detecting when the host is crashing and then gracefully redirecting the client to the uh, lobby. Um, I've also inserted into this video uh, the fix for the network player movement. I'm sorry. Um, somehow with the there was some cache issue on my uh, machine, so I wasn't getting that bug, but the, I, I just cleared the cache and everything and then I was getting a bug. So um, here we go. We have the fix. Sorry it took that long. And also I'd like to announce that I'm kind of I'm, I've come to the conclusion that I'm going to end this series. Um, this series has been running for a long time now, and I think you kind of got a, the gist of like how to make this uh, make a multiplayer game. But I'm not done with multiplayer. I just want to explore other avenues. So um, I'm going to make another video soon where I'm going to be announcing uh, what the next series is. But we're still going to do uh, Unity and multiplayer. But I may include some bonus uh, things that you guys have asked for in the Discord or in the comments. Um, so yeah, I'm going to come up with kind of the list of feature of uh, things that I want for the next series. And I'm going to start building it. Um, I might do it a little bit differently right now. Because right now I'm doing the planning on my side and then showing you guys the video. I might do the planning on stream, on Twitch. I have my Twitch in the banner. Um, because I want to kind of also show you guys the process of like... Um, kind of learning these things, learning these things, try to figure out the APIs, how it works and everything. So yeah, so i um, super happy uh, with this first series. The feedback has been great. Um, you guys even um, in the comment section or in the Discord have been like uh, um, super helpful, helping me like make better videos. So yeah, uh, for this last video, I wanted to kind of do the full loop. Uh, so if the host crash, you're gonna be able to get back in the lobby and get back in the game. So thank you again for watching and let's get into the video. So this is a little insertion in this video because some of you have been having the bug where um, this line here in the on server state change was throwing a null exception. And I figured out why it wasn't uh, too hard to figure it out, but um, it just took me a little bit of debug time. Um, the problem is um, we cannot see here because I've actually fixed it, but um, here we did not save the state, which is um, safe state is this. What we were doing, like entering what we calculated in uh, our buffer, we did not save this before the server send a change of value. So um, if you were the server, um, your value was getting updated before um, you actually saved it into your local variable. So um, there's a couple of fix that we could have done. We could have just said like, um, this is a server. So um, we don't want to listen to the, for the on server change if we are on the server. So I think you could put that if into, um, if not server, but the way I decided to fix this was um, I moved that code into a safe state and um, if not server, I use that safe state and uh, else here, um, I make sure I save the state before updating the uh, network variable. So that safe state again was removed from the code that was here and it's in here now. So um, yeah, that was an easy fix, but um, there we go. Um, the code is going to be in GitHub anyway, so you can compare with yours. And uh, yeah, that would be the fix for uh, that uh, error. Okay, so let's start with the game manager. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to have a couple listeners more. Um, uh, add, add a little more le um, even listeners so that we can get notified whenever the client uh, connect, a new client connect or a client is disconnected. Because um, we want to handle the way that the, the fact that the hosts get disconnected or that we get uh, kicked from the game. So um, that's what we want to do. So here, we're going to go with an unenable. Let's start with that. Unenable, we're going to have the network manager, uh, network manager dot in uh, singleton dot on client. And we have the connected and disconnected callback. So we're going to do both on client disconnected. So if we do this on enable, we need to do this on disable. But let's do a first. Um, so this we want to do like something like a on client um, connected. Uh, that's it. And we're going to create that after. And here on client this disconnected. Okay. And now we want to do the same thing here. It's so not giving me an error. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. It's a plus here. We need to add this to that. So what we want to do is we want to do the same, but 
uh, let's just no, let's just take those one, but on uh, disable. So on disable, we want to do the same, but we want to do the minus to remove that event. And then we're going to generate the function. Let's do this one and let's do this one. Oops, sorry. Doop, doop. Okay, cool. I'm going to move them because I don't want them to be here. I want them to be here. Okay, so we have a private void on on uh, client disconnected. The ulong here is the ID, but the network manager ID. So it's going to be like zero, one, two, three. Um, uh, since it can be reused, it doesn't tell us much for now. Uh, but we could um, unconnected kind of store that ulong ID and say um, store something uh, another information from the player. But for now, we're just gonna um, we're just gonna log it because for us it's not it's not even. Uh, a big, a big. It's not. It's not really something that we want to implement right now. Um, another thing I would want to add to the network manager here, network manager. Dot. It's the change the log level. Okay, so we're gonna go with log level and place it to log level developer. Uh, while you're developing, it's good. It's good uh, to have those logs. Maybe you you would want to remove them from the build version, and we can do this with uh, with some pr uh, preprocessor. Um, but I'm not going to go into that right now. Enable network logs equal true. So that way we're going to have like much more information in the console of what is actually happening. Okay. So now for the, uh, let's go with, let's start first with the client connected because like we here, we're just going to debug log just to know that a client connected. So debug.log. Uh, player and let's put it uh, with the dollar sign player connected and let's say this and say obg there you go so then we're just gonna output player connected and the number of the player that connected uh for the prive for the unclean di disconnected so if we actually go in here on a client disconnected callback it says the callback to invoke when a client disconnects. This callback is only ran on the server and on the local client that disconnects. So there's two kind of uh, flow here. Either the server disconnected you or the you got disconnected. Um, so if the server disconnects you, it's going to run on your client. So that way we just want to know like, oh, did the client, did the server disconnect us? And why? what's the reason for that? But we're, we maybe not going to implement the, the reason, but... At least we want to know if we uh, we want to do something if we're disconnected. So network manager dot singleton dot um, local client ID client ID ID equals the that uh, ID like we could we could rename it uh, client ID uh, client ID. Let's do that. Let's rename it client ID. So if that happened. Then we don't want to do, let's say, a debug log saying I'm not connected anymore. Uh, then we want to do a network manager, network manager dot um, singleton dot shutdown. So we're going to shut down our manager because we're going to we're going to quit the game now. We're not connected to the server anymore. We cannot continue the game. So we're going to do this. And once you're disconnected de from the server, the network manager is shut down. You cannot use the network scene management. So we're just going to plain old use scene, ma scene manager that loads in async and go back to the main menu. Okay, so that's going to be it. And then uh, we can put a debug.log here for um, if it's not us that got disconnected. In fact, in fact, you know what? No, I'm not going to put it because we, we won't. We won't. Uh, it's only the server that's going to know that. Okay. So we're going to do this and it's going to be fine. Now, the only, the, the, the other thing we want to do actually is we want to detect if we're, if the server actually crashed and uh, we are losing a connection. So the good thing with the um, on client disconnected is you're going to get notified, but if the server actually crashed, he doesn't have time to actually notify the clients. So, oh, I'm crashing. Like you're crashing. It's something unexpected that happened. So um, clients won't get the notification. So then, but the, the, you're, you're still going to lose that connection. So what we're going to do is we want to look into, is it is the network manager shutting down? So uh, let's say void, uh, not necessarily that. We're just going to go with update. It's going to generate it for us. And then we're going to do if... Uh, 
network manager that singleton that is sh uh, no shut down pro shut down in progress shut down in progress that means like for some unexpected reason, we are losing our connection to the server, but it's not something that is um, a managed, so we won't receive a message. We just we don't know what happened, but our connection is actually shutting down. There, we have two things we can do. Either we can um, go back to the lobby or just go back to the main menu. Personally, in this load, what I want to show you is this is an unexpected shutdown. It means that you're getting you're getting um, you lost your connection, but you're not getting kicked from the lobby. So you're supposed you, you want to go and join back the game after. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in the lobby manager and we're gonna create a a method to just get you back to the lobby. So we're gonna do go back to lobby, and um, there, we're we're gonna need to know like why are you going back to the lobby. Uh, because there's there may be other ways um, uh, you're gonna go, go back to the lobby. So I'm gonna pass it through, but that's gonna be a parameter that says, oh, were you actually disconnected? Because we're gonna need to know that. Okay, so I'm gonna generate that, and here we go. Now we just need to implement that method. Okay, so in here, what we want to do here first is reset our in-game variable. So we are not in game anymore, okay? Because we are leaving the game. Um, so here uh, we're gonna want to was. Uh, uh, was this connected? Um, this is going to be because if we were disconnected, then our really code that is in the uh, lobby data is not good anymore. So we're going to go back in the lobby. We're going to see that there is a really code and want to try to join it. But we won't, we don't want to try to join it because as soon as the server closes this connection with the relay, the relay kicks everyone. So um, there's none there. You can't reconnect to that relay. So it's going to give you an error. So you need to kind of... Uh, Make sure uh, that you uh, don't reuse that relay code. But since you are not the lobby host, you cannot clean it yourself. So you just need to make sure that you don't re we don't we don't use it. You know, we don't try to use it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have an, our own was disconnected variable. That's what we're gonna do this with, and we're gonna say if it was disconnected, then we're gonna say the we're gonna have a pr uh, previous uh, lobby uh, relay code previous relay code that is going to be equal, equal to the lobby data the relay join code so we're storing kind of that relay code to make sure that um, whenever we get an update of the lobby that relay code is not equal like we have a new relay code it's not equal to the previous one okay after that we just want to go and update um, our lobby player uh, our local uh, lobby player data uh, is ready is now false because we're going back to the lobby so we don't want to have to uh, have that have our, be already ready we're gonna have to ready up again so lobby manager lobby manager uh, oh yeah, yeah yeah I need to mark that method as a sync and we're gonna do a wait lobby manager dot instance dot update lobby data and we're going to pass him our local uh, lobby data id and local lobby data whoop, dot serialize so uh is that the yeah this is supposed to work so what is he saying here uh no it's not the update lobby data it's update uh player data there we go Oh, they player data. So we pass him the ID and we okay. So let's go and create those variable at the top. Um, so yeah, you can place it um, anywhere there. So I'm gonna put it like uh, right here. We're gonna say private bool was disconnected. We're gonna say uh, initialize it to false. By default, it, the, I, I put it, but by default, if you don't put anything, that's why it's gray out here. It's that because the default is false. So in fact, you know what? We can remove that. It's going to be by default false. Uh, there you go. <clears throat> so there you go. And now we want to have a private string. Uh, previous. Uh, let's me, let me copy paste that. Make sure I'm not doing any mistake. Previous relay code. Uh, let's go here previous relay code. So by default, it's going to be an empty string uh, Since it's a string. Okay, perfect So now that we have that we're going to be able to go into our lobby updated and see um, 
and make sure we, we do the right thing here. Um, so yeah, in the lobby update, the part we actually want to um, want to update is mostly this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if lobby data that really uh, code is not equal to default and if in game, but here we want to check something else. If I was disconnected, then uh, we're going to check the lobby code and make sure that um, it's not the same as the previous one. So really join code is not equal to the previous code relay code. Uh, then we're going to do the await uh, join when relay server and we're going to pass in the lobby data that relay code. OK. Uh, good. And then we're going to do the scene manager dot load scene async and we're going to go into the lobby data dot scene name. Good. Um, so that's perfect. And here. If I wasn't disconnected, then I'm going to do the uh, classic thing here. OK. OK, so um, that's what we want to do. Uh, we've made sure to reset our in game to false so that uh, um, we uh, can go back in here and we're going to check if you, we were disconnected. And if we were disconnected, then we're going to go and say that uh, we're going to check that our relay code changed. So it's not the same as the previous one. And then we do the classic. Uh, we join and then we uh, uh, we we uh, we join the co we connect to the relay and then we load the scene async. OK, so we're going to do another um, small improvement. There's going to be fallback for this. So um, we just want to make sure that um, this line also we execute it whenever we update our data here to say that um, we actually join the relay. So it's going to be a fallback in case like we this this line doesn't work because we don't use the go back to lobby uh, immediately when we join the relay uh, for the the client, we're going to set here uh, R is ready to fall. And let's also make sure um, that uh, we do it here and here in the start game you want to add that same line before updating the uh, host player data. OK, <clears throat> so let's fix something in the lobby player. So in the lobby player, I had some problem uh, when going back to the lobby with this um, exact line here. So um, what I actually did is I moved it. Um, I moved it to be always instantiated uh, before we try to access it. So I just remove the start and do an instantiation of the property block. So um, that fix it for me uh, and it make it make it so like uh, the players kind of spawn again whenever um, we go back to the lobby. Another fix that we need to do here is on the lobby spawner. So problem is when um, the problem is when I was going back to the lobby um, that on lobby updated wasn't executed. So the um, the player weren't shown kind of immediately. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do a start method. Uh, start there you go and what we want to do is we just want to call on lobby updated so on lobby updated is uh, usually drive driven by this event but we want to make sure it execute once so that we go and fetch all the lobbies and then show them okay so that's going to make uh, the players show again and another fix we need to do is here we're going to set the cursor um, in the lobby UI in the on enable, we're going to set the cursor visible to true and the cursor lock mode to uh, lock mode none. So that way, when we get back into the lobby from the game, um, our cursor appear again, because in a game, the cursor is locked and hidden. So we kind of want to change that. So there it is. Um, we have another fix I forgot into the game lobby manager in the uh, go back to lobby. You should have that um, scene dot load async. Uh, scene async uh, to lobby. I forgot to put it. And this is what's with, uh, that will actually get us back into uh, the lobby. All right. So let's uh, test this. So in here, I'm going to host. In here, I'm going to join. I'm going to enter the lobby code. And uh, why? there we go. Lobby code entered. I'm going to ready up here, ready up here. And we're going to start the game. Here, I'm going to move away here. Let's go. So now, now that we here, all I need to do is go back to the server, Alt F4 and it's crashing. And there we go. I am back in the lobby. Now we're going to launch uh, the server, the host again. So we go launching him again. Uh, we'll have the rejoin so we can rejoin and you'll see here I am back. 
I have the information of the map here that uh, came in. So um, now it's showing the map. I'm going to go and ready up. Going to go ready up here. As you can see, I still get this state. If here it changes, it changes there too. And then I can start the game again. And here we go. We are both back in the game. Here we go. And there it is for uh, the detecting the host crashing video. Um, so this also means that this, this series is ending. I'm super glad we did it. And I hope you guys have um, been able to build some stuff with uh, these tutorial. If you did, I, I would love to test your game. So if at some point you guys made a game with this or anything, um, I'd be more than happy to, uh, to help, uh, uh, help test it or help QA it. Uh, I think it would be super fun. So um, as I said in the intro, I'm going to announce uh, in the near future, uh, my next series should be like in the next week. I should announce uh, what's going to be uh, the scope for the next series. Um, just for a little bit of a ballpark, I'm looking more in into doing um, multiplayer with the transport layer instead of the network library, the netcode for game objects. Um, and also I'm going to look into um, uh, doing dedicated server dedicated server and there's still one more surprise that I don't want to <laughs> announce yet but yeah we're gonna have a dedicated server I may, I may not do the whole uh, deploying because um, this actually has some cost but you're still gonna be able if you want to uh, deploy it so uh, but I don't want to spoil everything so I'm still gonna end this here I want to say Thank you guys. We just passed like 10,000 views on the channel. Uh, it's been an amazing, it's been an amazing journey. Um, I started back in September and now like I'm still making those videos and um, the channel is getting more and more uh, visibility and you guys are making a uh, great thing with uh, with these tutorials. So I'm super happy about it. Um, yeah, so this is it. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you like the video, please like, subscribe and share the video. I'll see you in the next series.